Hello, my lovely little dragonlings. My name is RP Catgirl56, and uh, I know that I am supposed to go to Redfall. I did promise you guys that, but I feel like we are missing a certain companion, and I think uh, we're gonna get her. And then I'm gonna go to Redcliffe. Don't worry. Okay. Let's see here. Let's. You. Yes. You yes. Or yes. All right. Let's go get her. Oh boy. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know. But they will act against you. I have arranged for a, a solution, with your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin? Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done. Oh, Logan, you are going to fail spectacularly. Oh, you need a level up. Rough travels out here, eh? We even saw dark spawn on the way in. Where are you We're going? delivering a message to the chantry in Denerim. You? What's that message we about? We saw a blood mage down near the Brazilian forest. We're off to tell the chantry about him. I thought you said... Wait, you're serious? Uh, 
I suppose that's all right. As long as it gets there. Stay safe. Continuing on. <clears throat> you uh, sir. You'll have to forgive me if I seem a bit nervous. Not many people travelling in this part of Ferelden. Of course, that's part of my problem, isn't it? Mule got spooked by a wisp and ran off into the woods. Now what do I do? Part of your well, problem? Well, yes. Oh, it's been quite the month. Allow me to introduce myself. Felix de Grosbois, merchant and entrepreneur at your service. I'm up here, please. I don't normally take this route, but with the war, I was hoping for a bit of luck and good weather in the mountains. Sadly, I've had neither. Ugh, this trip has been one miserable disaster after another. I don't suppose you consider helping a fellow out? Have a fellow out how? Of all the other things that went wrong, the worst is this artifact I brought in Jada. It's a control rod, I'm told, for a golem. No point in me keeping it, however, as I'll never get to use it. But, uh, maybe you could? Well, that's the dwarf rod. I brought it from said it activates and controls a golem. So long as you have it in your hand, the golem does what you say. Might be useful, no? I mean, you look like the sort who could use one, yes? What's the it's catch? catch. Uh, yeah, I uh, suppose it is a catch, isn't it? The catch is that the golem didn't come with the rod. <laughs> it's supposed to be down in a village down south, waiting to be activated. Even if I could get down there, which I can't, <laughs> I understand the place has been overrun by Darkspawn. That's not such an issue for adventurous types like yourself, surely. Or I'm hoping that's so, at least. How do I know if this will even work? The fellow I brought it from is a long-standing contact. He didn't want to come to Ferelden, however, with all our... troubles. <laughs> he said he got it from the man who owned this golem. But to be honest, I have no idea if it will work. Hence... The low, low price? <laughs> what do you say? How much do you want it for? Nothing. I just don't want to have to lug around something that might be taken for a gemstone by some bandit. To be honest, I don't even know if it'll be useful to you. I paid too much to simply throw it away. Yes, I think I could use it. Just as well. As I mentioned before, you'll find the golem down south, in a town called Honleaf. I'll mark it here on your map. Just hold up the rod and say Dulaf Gar. That will wake the golem up, so I'm told. I hope it works. And if it doesn't. Maybe you could look up the fellow who owned the golem before. If he's still about, that is. <laughs> Best of luck to you then. Now, I guess it's up to me to find that mule myself. Let's get our golem. <coughs> oh, thank the maker. We need help. They attack the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them.
son of a bitch. Damn. Okay, then. Ah. Ah. I'll be... I'll get us back to where we were. Alright, I am technically back to where we were. And, uh... And I got uh, new party members. Hopefully this will help. Yes. Christ.
Ah, okay. Ah, get up, get up, get up. Whoa, 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 whoa. There. The other assassin is wounded and unconscious but alive. You can tie him up and talk to him if you wish. Mmm. Oh, what? I. Oh. Oh, I rather thought I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. I have some questions. Ah, so I am to be interrogated. Let me save you some time. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. What are the Antivan Crows? This elf is a crow. That makes sense. They are an order of assassins out of Antiva. I understand they almost run that nation, and are hired only at great expense. Quite right. I'm surprised you haven't heard much of the Crows out here, back where I come from. We're rather infamous. Came all the way from Antiva? Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. Who hired you to kill us? A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Logan, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. Does that mean you're loyal to Logan? I have no idea Loghain? what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. And now you fail oh, well, service. that's between Loghain and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. And between you and me? Isn't that what we're establishing now? When were you to see him next? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results, if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the Crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. If you... if you had failed. What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> No, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? How much were you paid? I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Then why were? Then why are you one? Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The crows bought me young. I was a bargain, too, or so I'm led to believe. But don't let my sad story influence you. The crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men, whatever you happen to fancy. Though the whole severance package is garbage, let me tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. Why are, why are you telling me all of this? <laughs> why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Aren't you at least loyal to your employers? Loyalty is an interesting concept. If you wish, and you're done interrogating me, we can discuss it further. Well, I'm listening. Make it well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause. So let me serve you instead. Can I expect the same amount of loyalty from you? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing, that's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you're the sort who would do the same thing. In which case, I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. 
And what's to stop you from finishing the job later? To be completely honest, I was never given much of a choice regarding joining the Crows. They bought me on the slave market when I was a child. I think I paid my worth back to them plus tenfold. The only way out, however, is to sign up with someone they can't touch. Even if I did kill you now, they might just kill me on principle for failing the first time. Honestly, I'd rather take my chances with you. Won't they come after you? Possibly. I happen to know their wily ways, however. I can protect myself as well as you. Uh, not that you seem to need much help. And if not, well, it's not as if I had many alternatives to start with, is it? What do you want in return? Well, let's see. Being allowed to live would be nice, and would make me marginally more useful to you. And somewhere down the line, if you should decide that you no longer have need of me, then I go on my way. Until then, I am yours. Is that fair? Why would I want your service? Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to stealth and picking locks. I could also warn you should the Antivan Crows attempt something more sophisticated, now that my attempts have failed. I could also stand around and look pretty if you prefer. Warm your bed. Fend off unwanted suitors, no? Is this before or after you stab me in the back? These things you say, they must drive the men back home simply wild. So what shall it be? I'll even shine armor. You won't find a better deal, I promise. Ah, very ill. I accept your offer. Fine plan. But I would examine your food and drink far more closely from now on, were I you. That's excellent advice for anyone. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. Well, welcome to the teams, everyone. But... No wonder you kicked my ass. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think for the time being, this will be good. Oh, girl. Let's continue on. Very well. begun. As you say.
Yoink. I shall do it. Dab. This is a golem, I believe. Damaged, perhaps beyond repair. There may be a way to reactivate it, though that is not necessarily wise. He wasn't aware it's seen, has been scattered about.
Yep, glitchy wall. Oh, everything's slightly glitching around. By the Maker, we're saved! You weren't sent by the ban, were you? To save us? No, I'm a Grey Warden. Grey Warden? Here! Thank the Maker for our luck! But if you weren't sent by someone, why are you here? If you don't mind me asking. Merchant told me about this place, actually. Merchant? Why would a merchant... Oh. Uh, I think I see. This is about shale, isn't it? I should have known. That damnable golem brought us nothing but trouble. My mother sold the rod years ago after it killed my father, and good riddance! Killed your father? What do you mean? My father's name was Wilhelm. Mage to the Isles of Redcliffe and a hero in the war against Orlais. And what did he get? One day, my mother found him outside the tower. With so many broken bones, she could barely recognize him. And Shale standing over him, just like it is now. My father deserved better than that. But if you really want to wake Shale up, well, it's yours now. Except the rod didn't work. Nothing happened. My mother might have passed along the wrong command phrase when she sold the rod. She said she never wanted to see Shale active again. Look, I'll tell you the command phrase, but I'll need your help first. I know you already saved my life, and I'm grateful, but my daughter is inside the laboratory. She was afraid and ran too far in before I could stop her. I don't know how she made it past my father's defenses. One of the men tried to go after her. He was killed, but you could find her, couldn't you? Who killed this man? 
Who went after defenses her? my father put down here to keep strangers out. I knew about the barrier. I, I had the key for that. But the rest of it, well, we never came down here. Ever. How do you know? How do you even know she's still alive? I don't. It's true. I'm terrified that something's happened to her and she's lying in there, injured. I can't leave here until I know for certain. Surely you can understand that. I'll see if I can you find will? her. You will? Thank the Maker! My father's laboratory is just past the next area, I think. She has to be there. Thank you for saving the game. And I'm also going to make my own save. Very well. be done. Oh look, someone's come to play. You have come to play, haven't you? We're playing a guessing game. It's better with more people. Good, you're safe. Your father was father? worried. Oh, you can tell him I'm fine. Maybe he'll come and stay with us too. Anyway, you should go if you're not going to play. Kitty finds you distracting. Cat finds me distracting? Kitty's clever. She says you want to take me back to my father, but I'm not going. She would be lonely. Hmm, I would not suggest leaving in such hostile company anyhow, Amalia. Look how they act. That... That's not really a cat, is it? Of course she's a cat. She just talks, that's all. Talking is simple enough, once you know how. Right. What are you, really? I am a cat. Really. Nothing you say will convince Amalia to go with you. She loves only me now. I am her friend, while you are just a stranger. Uh... 
What have you done I to have her? I've done nothing. I am all but powerless. The mage made sure of that, didn't he? I cannot leave this chamber. No, Amalia found me. After decades of isolation, her company is... Welcome. <sighs> it seems we are at an impasse, so let me propose... A compromise of sorts. Release me, mortal, and let me have the girl. Let us return to her father, and leave this place forever. Let you have the girl? You mean That's possess such a crude her. way of putting it. I do not wish to harm Amalia. I merely want to see your world through her eyes. Is that so wrong? Can't I cannot let the demon take her. do this. Obviously, I can't let her go. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck you. Huh? We're gonna Thank lie. Thank you. You are very gracious. The mage's wards hold me within this chamber, and only a mortal may approach them. There is a trick to disarming the wards, but I do not know it. Perhaps you will succeed where the girl failed. Oh, this is so exciting! Kitty is going to be free! I've always wanted a cat, and Kitty is so perfect and pretty. Oh, kid. I'll do it. I like it when Kitty sings to me. I shall do it. Very well. Ow! Okay, okay. Go on. Alter positions. Go. Father doesn't like cats, but he never met Kitty. Go. Get off the board. Off the board. Off the board. <coughs> As you say. Kitty says Grandpa Wilhelm locked her up in this room. Isn't that awful? Uh, yeah. Awful indeed. Awful indeed. Very well. Ah! Okay. He's my best friend. It is begun.
very well. I was thinking about the sun, silly. <laughs> I shall do it. It is begun. It shall be done. Ow! Tell me a story. It shall be done. You say. Oh, it's a flower. Is it a daffodil? I like daffodils. It is begun. As you say. It shall be done. to the cat and kitty is so perfect and pretty it is begun very well it is begun I've always wanted a cat and kitty is so perfect and pretty it shall be done Magic fading. Oh, I had forgotten how it feels not to be caged. Kitty, what's happening? A wonderful thing, my dear, for both of us. I said I freed you. I didn't say I'd let you. Betrayal! You will not take the girl. She is mine. Kitty, you're scaring me. I won't let you inside me! I won't! Good girl.
better leather. position. <clears throat> oh, all this glitching. Oh, uh, God. I gotta get out of this glitching hell. Ugh. You did it! You freed her! Thank you so much! I'm sorry I ran away, Daddy. I was so scared. It's all right, Butterfly. You're safe now. All the bad creatures are gone. The phrase to activate Shale is Doolin Han. If you still want that bloody thing. I wouldn't if I were you. Now we should go, and quickly! Thank you again. We owe you our lives. Time to head on up. All right, Shale. Oh, wicked. I knew that the day would come when someone would find the control rod. And not even a mage this time. Probably stumbled across the rod by accident, I suppose. Typical. How do you know I'm not it a mage? thinks these crystals are simply for show, I see. Huh. I stood here in this spot and watched the wretched little villagers scurry around me for, oh, I have no idea how long, many, many years. Then one wonders that you wouldn't be grateful to the one who allowed you to stretch your legs, Gollum. Hmm, another mage, I see. Charming. <sighs> I was just beginning to get used to the quiet, too. Tell me, are all the villagers dead? Not all of them, Some no. got away then. How unfortunate. Do you have a name? Perhaps. I may have forgotten after all the years of being called Gollum. Gollum, fetch me that chair. Do be a good Gollum and squash that insipid bandit. And let's not forget Gollum, pick me up. I tire of walking. It does have the control rod, doesn't it? I am awake, so it must. Something I wrong? I see the control rod, yet I feel... Go on, order me to do something. What, why? Oh, go on, it will be fun. All right, walk and, over there. Uh, nothing. I feel nothing. I feel no compulsion to carry out its command. I suppose this means the rod is broken. Shouldn't you be happy about mm. that? I suppose if I can't be commanded, this means 
I have free will, yes? It is simply, what should I do? I have no memories beyond watching this village for so long. I have no purpose. I find myself at a bit of a loss. What about it? It must have awoken me for some reason, no? What did it intend to do with me? I haven't given it much thought. I see. Wonderful. I suppose I have two options, do I not? Go with it or go elsewhere? I do not even know what lies beyond this village. Are you going to keep calling me it? Yes, very likely. Killed your former Did master. I? I remember that I had a former master. The mage with the furry brows who poked and prodded and barked orders. Did I kill him? I hope I did kill him. Perhaps the last order he barked was Gollum, stop crushing my head. Ah! I noticed you didn't ever call him it. Yes, I'm just funny that way. What do you want to I do? I watched this village for so long, unable to move or act. My memories of anything before are vague at best. So I have no idea what I want to do. I'm glad to be mobile. Is that not enough? How do I know I can trust? I have no I idea. Trusted. How does it trust anything else without a control rod? Good point. They haven't killed it yet. I consider this a good sign. You're welcome to come with me. I will follow it about then. For now. I am called Shale, by the way. I am RP. Pleased to meet you. This should be interesting. Alright, we now got our party. A rock and a hard place. Okay. Going to Red Cliff. Definitely gonna need a lot of healing. Vashadan. Hello? Come on up. Last damnation. Yes. There we go. Indeed. Why can't I Let's see. Uh. I've been studying Mother's Grimoire. Do you wish to hear what I have found? What did you find? It is not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. But this is not it. Yet you look disturbed. disturbed? Yes, perhaps that is the right word. One thing in particular within her writings disturbs me. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. It's 
spell of immortality. Oh, if only it were so. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout chastened legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter, and when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. So why would she risk sending you with me? I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said, the Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to settle in. You had no idea? I'm so sorry. Do not be sorry. I am not. I am angry. There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. Why do you need my help? Because if she is slain while I am near, I am not certain that she will not simply be able to take possession of me right there. So obviously I cannot be the one to do it. Yo, Flemeth, isn't that a little It strange? may seem so. If you think of Flemeth as a mother, think of her instead as an ancient abomination that intends to use her own flesh and blood to extend her life beyond all natural limits. She did not wish anyone to get a hold of this information, least of all me. Now I have. If I do not act on what I know, then more the fool am I. Perhaps you could talk to her about it first? And what would that do? At best, I would receive pointless reassurances. At worst, Flemeth would imprison me once she became aware I know what I do. I know my mother well enough to be confident she would show no mercy when it came to her own survival. I must do the same. Very well, I'll help you if then I can. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari Wilds without me. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she would truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. Do I have a time limit on this? Not really, but the sooner the better, no? Are you serious? Kill Flemeth, the Witch of the Wilds? <laughs> she would like everyone to think she is invincible, but I highly doubt that is the case. And besides that, you are not truly killing her. I'll see what I can I do. I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. At least we got shale.
Severin. I shall treasure it. Thank you. I can do for you. Please, please tell. I'm sure you'll be. I see it found some augmentation crystals. I was not even aware it knew about them. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is. I think they're so pretty. They are, aren't they? I so adore them. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. Hmm. Oh. What the heavy oh, thighs? That. Merely reflecting on the hopeless nature of the task in front of it. The most likely outcome is that it and its companions will become a stain on some rock for the Darkspawn to tread upon. I shall be moved to a single tear by the tragedy. Glad to know that you care at least. It's true. One single tear. And then it's off to the north, I think. Or maybe west. I haven't decided. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. Oh. I would have expected golems to be different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, master, I exist to serve the master. I shall kill for the master and only for the master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. Are they dirty limericks? Mostly they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. 
I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Being different isn't so bad. Did I say it was bad? <laughs> it thinks I hang on its every word, waiting for approval. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. I agree, being a girl. I agree, a golem Imagine would be Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other functions. Walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. <laughs> oh. I have some questions. It doesn't have better things to do. Are those crystals... Are those crystals in your skin? I like to think of them as accessories. But what do they do? I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then... added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. Dwarven thing, then. So, I would assume. My former master enjoyed poking around the ruins in the deep roads, after all, and bartering with others who did. As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. <laughs> but they can do other things. Did he succeed? Not really. Although now that I think of it, these attempts may be what caused my disruption. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if added to me. Would you be willing to have to have uh, more added? Why not? I don't get to wear clothing and other adornments like the rest of you creatures, after all. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more. I'm told you killed your former master. Did I not already tell it that I do not remember doing such? I remember having a master. My memories of what happened to him are vague. Big, but not like clever instant. and true. Oh, very well. Let me see what I can recall. My former master enjoyed experimenting upon me. I remember that much. There was tinkering with spells and then the crystals. He was very eager to alter my function, I think. to your wire, fine as you are. Flattery, and obvious flattery too. I feel warm and fuzzy inside. He possessed my control rod, and back then, it would have prevented me from doing anything he did not command me to, no matter how I might have wished to. So what happened? I am unsure. He was experimenting, and then, nothing. So he hit the kill me button by accident? Oh, ho, ho. It does like to laugh, does it? But who knows? I may have such a thing. And then he was gone. I was standing where I was, in the village, and I could no longer move. 
The villagers came, poked and prodded me in fear, and then realized they could neither move me nor destroy me. So they simply left me. And in time, I forgot I hadn't stood there all along. Must have been terrible. I'm sorry. <sighs> in fact, at first, I found it more of a relief. For so many years, I'd had to leap to that little toadstool's every command. Get this, pick up that, put it down, pick it up again. The gall! At first, I'd hoped he'd simply decided to leave me there paralyzed. An acceptable trade-off. After years passed, I simply stopped caring. Sounds like you had a good rest. I think I was ready to move on. Another few years and the moss would have covered my face. And then where would I have been? Whatever the mage did seemed to render the control rod useless. For which I should be thankful, yes? And provided it doesn't decide to copy his experiments, not that I would allow it, it is nothing to fear for me. Much. Sounds good to the me. The things that it fights, and it fights things often, that is a different story. Let us get back to the walking and the fighting. My stone is beginning to itch again. I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I have decided that it is not much like any of them. That's super. Thanks, Shal. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings? My father was a Tyran of High Ever. Oh, then that must be it. I knew there had to be some reason, it being a human and all. I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. And we, we wouldn't want that. Indeed. Can it imagine the horror? <laughs> now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. Uh. You know, now that I'm older, I really like her. It speaks. I have questions. It doesn't have better things to do. How'd you end up there? Do you remember? Oh, yes. That I remember quite well. My former master, the mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum, snarl at that villager there. Be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> do you remember anything before? I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. Just how old are you exactly? I have no idea. Wilhelm used to brag that the dwarves stopped making golems centuries ago. I do not age as you soft creatures do. Sadly, my memory is no better. Plus, I get bored and stop paying attention. I would have thought that you would enjoy scaring I'd humans. have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I'd do it twice. 
What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. But why were you in front of the tower? That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Bah. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. His wife? Hmph. I was once larger, ten feet tall. Then the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down. Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. How does someone shrink a golem? And a lot of nerve. You didn't like this, uh, Wilhelm. I take it. He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Well, I'm sold it, I believe. Hag. Interesting. I'm done talking good. about it. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? Alistair. What do you need? Nothing, I guess. Shiny. <laughs> Here I am. Care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. What does it take to become an assassin? Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training. The sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process, and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. You did quite well, no doubt. Within the crows, I did. But it has been something the crows have devoted a great deal of time to perfecting. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth, and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. That could be, uh... Sounds like it could be useful. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Here I am. And can you teach others to be an assassin? Oh, I certainly could, but I won't. I swore to the crows that the things they taught me were to remain a secret. And while, yes, they are already angry at me, I'd rather not push things, you see. Don't you think this would be... You this need to important? learn the arts of the crows in order to slay Darkspawn, do you? You seem to be doing fine as it is. If you are truly insistent, well, let me think about it. The crows are already angry at me, yes? Who knows? Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Why did you want to leave the crows exactly? Well, now, I imagine that's a very fair question. 
Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? What would you... But what would you rather do? Now that you mention it, I am not entirely certain. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased. For three sovereigns, I'm told. Which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way. Buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder. And if you do poorly in your trading, you die. Sounds awful. Oh, I don't know about that. The crows who are actually good enough to survive come to enjoy some of the benefits. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect, it gets you wealth, it gets you women and men, or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. Why didn't you just leave then? And become the next mark for some up-and-coming crow? Not likely. The only way to leave is for them to think you're dead. And even then, you'd best be scarce. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I'll go where you go. I'm up. I'm happy to have you along. And here I am, happy to be had. Isn't it wonderful how things work out that way? Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. What do you mean by a weak mind? That is complicated. I told you before that I was sent here. I was not sent alone. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Callanhad. Came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us, our own shadows harbored the dark spawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down too late. I fell. It sounds like what happened to me at Ostagar. I heard the stories of Ostagar. Your kith stood their ground when others fled. No one can do more than that. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead. Nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke, I was no longer among my brothers. And my sword was gone from my hand. What did you do? I searched for it. And when that failed, I asked my rescuers what had become of it. Did the farmers know where it was? They said they found me with nothing. Did you believe them? I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. That's terrible. I know I cannot justify what I have done. My honor is forfeit. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antarm. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath.
Couldn't you search for it? If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Where did you fight the dark spot? Near Lake Callanhad. Don't worry, we'll find it. Perhaps those words are empty, but thank you all the same. I am glad that Sten is warming up to me. Yee. Lillian. Something I can help with? I would like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orlé ruled. When Orlé was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orlé. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orlé and did not set foot in Ferelde until much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. What happened to your mother? Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. You were young. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dry flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. That may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Go ahead, he's getting a little rank. Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. You deserve all the love, good boy. Look at you, you're such a good All right. We have our. We got Shell. Sal. Ugh, forgive me, I am stupid with names. Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? A cheese knife? Have you heard any rumors? Have you heard? Logain is named Arl Rendon Howe as the new Tern of Denerim, with the Arling going to Howe's eldest son. Yorian died at Astagar, and his son died in some elven revolt in the city. It's tragic news. I wonder what got Arl Howe such a promotion. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Let me see I'm sure wears. you'll be pleased with the goods my boy. That would be a bad gift for her. Oh well. Yes. 
definitely gonna need a lot of uh Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Alright. Let us officially head Oh. No no no. Never not going to do that ever. Let's officially go to uh Red Cliff. But since I've already had dealt with this before, I'm going to pause and uh Hopefully we'll get to where we were in uh, part two. All right, after that, I managed to get back here. I did go through the, uh, you know, saving uh, the village once again. I did manage to do proper uh, convincings, so that's good. But uh, at my current time frame right now, it is late, so this will be another uh, short episode, but I will start this up again soon, and uh, we're gonna go into the castle and uh, get to the get to all Eamon. All right, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part. Farewell.